Ding, ding, ding. Welcome back, everybody. We are back up in this thing for real. I am Trey Amazing, part-time, stripper, part-time pastor, but full-time dating commentator. And today, much anticipated guest inside the infamous ring, I have esteemed Atlanta radio personality and journalist, a recognized authority on hip-hop and always up-to-date on the latest trends in music, artists, movies, and entertainment. You know him from the Ricky Smiley Morning Show and Dish Nation. Representing his hometown of NYC, we have Brother Head Crack in the building. Say what's up, fam. Peace and love, world. Peace and love. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I recently had the pleasure of meeting you at Miss Kelly Coyne's event on how to be a better jump off. Mm -hmm. You and I sat on the panel, and I think we did a phenomenal job. I'm you know, giving myself a pat on the back. Oh, pat um, that back, bro. Oh, yeah. You're right. I, think, I think we laid it out. I think you and I had some great uh, perspective for the crowd. And a uh, big shout out to Kelly Coins uh, for inviting us and, you know, for promoting her book. You know, I found it kind of interesting that she asked me uh, to sit on the panel. She knows, you know, my my perspective on, you know, fidelity, you know, being faithful in marriage, being faithful in relationships and so forth. But, you know, I, I, you know, I still um, appreciated her for the opportunity. And I was like, maybe she just wanted you know, contrast and opinion or whatever, but, you know. Yeah, balance is good, and contrast, you know, brings more conversation and more, you know, angles, man, so it's dope. Indeed, indeed. And so, having you here, I mean, you, you're a notable figure here in Atlanta. You have a huge platform. I mean, people tune in and listen to what you have to say, you know, about things regarding, you know, entertainment and artists and so on and so forth. And I wanted to get you inside the way you talk about a topic that, can be somewhat polarizing, you know, between the genders. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about dating, we talk about, you know, dating with, you know, intentionality and whatnot. A lot of people, particularly women, you know, I'm gonna put the women in the hot seat for a second, okay. you know, they talk about how difficult it is to find men, you know, to find the men they want, the high value men they're looking for, the men who are alpha males, who are leaders, and so forth. And they talk about, you know, something else you mentioned is, you know, men not approaching women like they, they used to or the way they should. In your opinion, you know, I've tried to counter this thought process by encouraging women, why don't you just start approaching men? You know, and when I say approaching, I don't mean using the same, you know, masculine energy like it was such a <laughs> You know, you can use feminine wiles. You can, you know, go up to a man and flirt or give a compliment so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I've often wondered, like, what... You know, what is stopping more women from approaching men? I think maybe classic tropes that have been put on the whole spectrum of dating. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the man is supposed to make the first move and make that play and all that other stuff. And I think that's kind of what keeps certain people in a certain pocket. Or maybe like, well, you know, based on the way my mom and dad did it, you know, this is what happened. And sometimes, you know, when you get stuck in tradition, you're gonna be stuck in that tradition and not wanna evolve and move. And the thing is, there is no rule book or playbook that says how these things are supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you see something you want in a store, you're gonna go grab that, right? You know what I mean? So if you see something that you want in a wild mop, go holler at it, because you never know, because there's a lot of guys who, one, are afraid of rejection, mm -hmm. so who maybe won't be the ones to make the first move. I am one of those people. I was never really a first move maker. I was more of like a long term kind of player. If you're somebody I'm gonna see on a regular basis, just do interactions with work, school, or whatever, I'm gonna probably be more so likely to, you know, just, I, I ain't gonna make the move right away. Cause you don't wanna repel somebody because sometimes you can miss social cues. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who, don't understand or catch the social cues that people throw out. Like, yo, you understand she's feeling you, right? A word? You know, I miss those all the time. So sometimes, you know, you might find yourself being in a position where you need somebody to be a little bit more direct so you can understand. Oh, I thought she was just nice. Oh, I thought he was just nice. That kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times where me being just nice and cordial maybe comes off as like I was, you know, trying to holler at you but maybe I was, mm -hmm. you know, you just don't know. So I don't think there's anything wrong with women just going for it, if that's what you want, because it should be a two-way street. 
And then there's a lot of guys who are afraid because of this Me Too movement mm. in time that we're in. Boom. Like, yo, what, what you doing commenting on my outfit? Don't cat call me. Yo, I just said you look nice. So I think, you know, society has beaten up enough men between point A and point B to where some of us are afraid to make that move. And we just going, hey, man. If we, if, we, if we make eye contact for longer than seven seconds, then maybe I know I got something, or I'll just wait to see if you throw some like real strong energy at me, and we'll go from there. Oh no, I agree, and I think you, you know you hit the nail right there when you talk about the Me Too movement because I've definitely seen comments on social media from guys like, okay, it's not it's not that difficult these days to be labeled a creep, mm -hmm. or for a woman to think that you know you're harassing her or whatever, even if you are in your sense of being a gentleman or being straightforward, you know, you're a lot of men, you know, don't want to have that stigma that, you know, they're being inappropriate and before right. you know it, you know, there's a hashtag named after you, you know, you, you <laughs> on social media for all the wrong reasons. Right. And so I think that's a very valid point and I think, you know, I've seen enough men comment on that where like, you know, they they're put off by that. But on the flip side, you know, I've come across so many women that talk about, well, it's a man's nature to go out and do the hunting and do the approaching. For a woman to approach a man is masculine energy. And I've seen the ridiculous comments like, okay, if a woman approaches a man, that means she's going, that's gonna set the tone for the entire relationship. She's gonna be the one to be, to be the leader and take on the leadership role and to call the shots. And he's not gonna be, you know, as um, masculine is what she's looking for, which I always thought was BS. I even had, I had a close friend of mine say, well, even in nature, you know, and for birth, the sperm goes after the egg, not the other way around. And so a lot of women use that as their justification for why, no matter what, no matter how many lonely birthdays and holidays <laughs> and weddings as a bridesmaid go to, they're like, they will not approach a man. I'm thinking to myself, if you want, you know, in order to get something you ain't never had, you gotta do things you ain't never done before. Yeah. So why, what is the huge aversion, especially if you see a man that is your type, he's not wearing a wedding ring, he's physically what you're looking for, dressed nice, smells nice, what is the aversion to just going up to him and introducing yourself? I think there is a lot of people who, the same way I mentioned that guys are afraid of rejection, women have pride and ego as well. Absolutely. And they're also afraid of rejection. Or they don't want to make it seem like they're coming on too strong. So maybe they're, you know, they don't want to have the stigma put upon them. that Oh, I'm being too easy because I, I was the person in pursuit. And it's crazy how, like, you'll travel and go to different cities. And the rule books kind of change a little bit. I remember the first time I went to, like, Houston. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is what was me after me living in Dallas for a long time. It's like, whoa, the women in Houston are very aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I liked it because it took a lot of the guesswork out of it. And you kind of knew where you stood evenly versus like, man, if I try to go talk to her, how would this work out? You know, like it would not. Same thing with Little Rock, Arkansas, another place where like, you know, women will run up on you and it'd be it made it easier for men if more places were like that. Mm -hmm. But I also am not afraid of wanting to do the work. So I'm not saying in totality, women should always be the ones who approach, but don't miss your opportunity because you let your pride and ego and whatever societal norms that people threw upon you in the past make you feel like, well, I shouldn't be the one to talk. Because like, man, you don't know what has happened to the person that you're trying to talk to that has put them in a place to where like, nah, I'm gonna be reserved and not necessarily throw that that, that hunter energy out there like that, you know what I mean? I don't think that means like, you know, that's gonna be the the thing that's gonna dictate the rest of the relationship and you're gonna be opening the door for him moving forward. It's just like, right. yo, you went and saw something you liked and you went for it. And you know what, that's the funny thing. It's like when I hear women, they project the entire lifeline of the relationship. Just like you said, like if I approach him, then I'm going to be the leader. He's gonna be the woman, I'm gonna be the man. Like, no, mom. That, doesn't necessarily mean, you know, just because a man approaches you doesn't mean you're going to be a gentleman throughout the relationship. Doesn't make them, just because a man approaches you does not automatically mean he's a leader of good character, of good, you know, faith and everything. It just means he approached you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but some women, it amazes me how, you know, these women are completely content going from their 30s to their 40s, 50s, single, no man. And you tell them, well, how about you suggest them, how about you approach a man? No. 
I'm not doing it. I'm like, so you good where you at? You stuck where you at because you are, like you said, stuck on tradition or mm -hmm. you're afraid of rejection. A woman can get rejected one time, she could be scarred for life. Whereas men, we're taught to just get over it, you know, doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, but we understand, okay, rejection may be part of it if we want something. If we want a woman, you're gonna have to go out there. I'm gonna get over it, but I'm gonna drive home in silence. Right. <laughs> He's like, damn, man, what could I have done differently? Yeah, yeah, I'm a friend of I'm, You know, I may be a little upset. I mean, you know, I may have a friend of for a little bit. I'm like, but I'm gonna move on and get over it. But um, you do have these cases where women are just completely, you know, particularly here in the South, you know, very stuck on that tradition. Even if they're leading completely untraditional lives themselves, mm -hmm. they're, you know, they pick and choose, like, these are traditions I want to keep and I'm immovable. Because I've often said, um, if you're a woman who's only going to date men that approach you, you only can choose from the men that approach you. Right. Regardless if they're handsome, not handsome, like you. But when you approach men, you have the opportunity to choose the men you actually like mm -hmm. and you want to be with. But if you're just going to sit and just wait, then the only thing you can choose from is just the men who are going to approach you, which may not, which may or may not always, you know, be what you're looking for. Yeah. And so, you know, even with tradition, because um, you've lived in, in YC, you've lived in Texas, and now you're here in Georgia. So you definitely, just like the example you use, you definitely see a difference geographically, as far as how women feel about approaching men and so mm. so forth? Yeah, I mean, so here's the thing. My whole ideology and mentality on how I move comes from being violently rejected by girls in New York growing up as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, but this is like when I was like way younger, when you like want to try to holler at somebody that you go to school with or who like, or like, you know, one of the girls in your church youth group, and they'd be like, ew. You know, those things echo in your brain, you know, when you sit at home at night, you know, processing the rest of the day or and things like that. So it just kind of puts you in a space to where like, all right, cool, I'm going to be more reserved and less vulnerable to put myself in those positions. And I'm just going to just let the, let the game come to me. I mean, and there has been situations where I have like actually like, you know, made the first move or like, you know, made some sort of motion to mm -hmm. let you know I was interested. But those types of rejections and those things that happen to you, whether it be male or female, kind of sets the table for how you move forward. You know, it's the things that happen to you when you're young that predicates how you move when you're older. So they stay, you, they stay with you. Yeah, so you don't know what has forged people's worldview and opinions on how things go. So everything's on a case-by-case -case basis. And I, and I run into so many people who just deal with the human condition in such a a blanket of totality to where it's like it just baffles me it's like yo you know this isn't what how everybody moves and operates do you know everything is a case-by-case -case basis so when people say like certain things like you just said like this is going to set up how the relationship is going to be for the future ma if you knew all that you could be a freaking tarot card reader you know what I mean? Or, or, or a psychic like, you know like tell me a lot of numbers from next week if you can yeah, go ahead yeah if you that smart and I, and I will say all the time that women are the world's greatest detectives. Y'all know a lot. But there's certain things to where you can't just make an overgeneralized statement and believe that this is what the answer is for every guy in every situation. And same thing, same thing with men. You know, like, you know, because you see situations where people be like, well, I don't date black women because this, that, and the third. I understand the human condition enough to understand that I cool. Mm -hmm. Some, some, some shit doesn't happen to you and you feel a certain way, but you can't look at it as a, a total situation or the assumption that all white girls are easy or that all Latino chicks get pregnant easy. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> people love to generalize. You know, yeah. People, you know, I've often said people generalize when they're too lazy to actually do the work and get to know people mm -hmm. for who they are. It's easier. It's, I mean, again, it's, it's a sign of laziness and I've had correct myself, you know, a few times, like it's a sign of laziness when you just want to generalize. And what I hate, this is what, you know, irks me to my soul, is when you do come across someone who contradicts your generalization, even they contradict your generalization using logic, what's the natural response people say? Oh, you're the exception to the rule. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, they're not the exception to the rule. You're just hung up on generalizations. Mm -hmm. That one or two bad experiences you've had, for you to set the tone for the rest of your life concerning this group of people. 
and now you're unwilling to actually get to know people for individuals, and it isn't necessary for you to lump everybody in the same group, which is you know quite detrimental. Okay. So let me let me ask you this, you know, really quickly, because you're going to have women who are going to be watching this. You know, big shout out to everybody in the ringside group on Facebook. If you're out there, you know, following this, make sure, you know, you go to the search bar on Facebook and you type in Ringside LLC. Request to join the private Facebook group, either myself or one of the admins who let me And also make sure you hit that big old subscribe button. Make sure you follow this channel, hit that bell for notifications. And most importantly, like I just said a second ago, hit that subscribe button and follow so head crack, check this out, man. Mm -hmm. For the ladies out there who are just so hung up on masculine, feminine energy, and that's the new thing on social media now, masculine, feminine energy, got me and my feminine energy, whatever the case may be, <laughs> who want to meet a man, but don't feel like they want to compromise or in their, in their thoughts compromise their feminine energy by approaching, how would, are there any recommendations you would think a woman can still be feminine and approach men at the same time, like uh, see a man she likes, he's wearing the right clothes, smelling nice, nice shoes, nice watch. Wants that man to talk with her, but doesn't want to approach. How can a woman approach and still be feminine, still maintain feminine energy? What are your thoughts? I don't understand how people don't see approaching as still being a part of the feminine energy. It is the nature of the human existence and condition to want to seek and find love mm -hmm. and to want to put out the frequency and the energy out there that they want to be loved and approached. So I don't understand women who feel like that is masculine energy to at least put out the, you know, put out the energy that, hey, like, you know, I am interested in you. It doesn't necessarily have to be something you do with your words. It's the way that you make eye contact, the way you maybe shake somebody's hand if you're a handshaking female, or the way you, uh, you know, you, you you check out somebody. There's so many things you can do that's not verbal, mm -hmm. that is just sometimes state of being. You know what I mean? People give off energies, good energy, bad energy. There's some people who could walk into a room right now and all of a sudden the, the, the energy in the room get weird. Mm -hmm. Because it's a bad energy. There's some people walk into a room and every, all of a sudden everybody light up because that's the energy they put out. So I think people in totality have to get more in a, a position of where they can learn, learn how to be nonverbal, mm -hmm. but more of a, a vibration to where you can pull and attract the energy and the, and, and the people that you want. Mm -hmm. You know, we're so, uh, we've got so primitive with all our technology. Because, you know, social media, the, uh, the, the ability of phones allowing us to be extroverted, it makes everything more of a, uh, just a direct line of communication. Like, I have to say specifically this with, with words in text form or verbal form or video form. When nah, sometimes you could just chill. You could be chill with somebody and just not say a word until they like you. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an energy, it's a pheromone, it's a frequency, it's all those things. And I think we got to like learn how to operate in that if you want them, people who don't want to be so verbal just because you feel like it comes off being like, you know, like your, your macho chick. But yeah, like you don't, you don't sacrifice your divine femininity by going after what you want. You're going to miss an opportunity by playing it like that. Don't, right. block, don't block your blessings. No, I agree. I, you know, I, I've expressed to women, you didn't have the sitting weight game when it came to that degree you wanted. You went and got it. Mm -hmm. Or that job, that career you wanted. You didn't sit in weight, you went after and got it. Right. Or that business you wanted to start. You didn't sit in weight, you went after, you went after and got it. But when it comes to a man, it really, for a lot, and I promise you, I see these comments where it's like, no, he should approach me. And if he doesn't approach me, then I'm not the woman for him, or you know, he obviously doesn't like me. I'm like, what? maybe he didn't notice you. Or maybe he wasn't sure if you were you know, marry or not, or whatever mm -hmm. it is to be. But again, I'll express to women, if you begin approaching men, you can begin to choose from the men that you like versus just the men who approach you. And, you know, you mentioned a second ago as far as, you know, technology, digital, social media. There are those women, I know you've seen this before, you see, you know, it happens every day where the women, they won't approach a man, but they'll set up a thirst trap. And the whole point of a thirst trap is they're not approaching them. <laughs> right. They're just setting that trap because, you know, for some women, they feel like 
a woman approaching men is a sign of desperation. And I've often kind of like, you think a woman approaching a man is desperation, but you don't find it desperate to constantly post half naked pictures of yourself on social media, you know, hoping that a man will, you know, like and heart the picture and eventually yeah. decide to be. That's not desperation. Yo, that's the part that is always blowing my fucking mind, bro. Like, people will put certain things on and then get mad when people comment on the things that they put on. It's like, what did you do that for? And I know sometimes people do certain things so they can feel good about themselves because mm -hmm. this is an outfit that makes me feel confident. However, you have to also understand that the byproduct of that sometimes is going to be additional eyes, mm -hmm. comments, some respectful, some not so much some respectful. Not so respectful. Yo, because some people are cavemen out here. But, you know, I remember there was a, a video that went viral a few years ago, and it was about a woman walking down the street in New York City and she was outside with that shit on mm -hmm. she was wearing that shit she knew she had that shit on and it was a thing they were talking about like cat calling is wrong and some people was just like approaching hey baby where you going okay and in the in the framework in which that video was presented what him, him that guy saying hey baby what's up where you going that was wrong, but that was him shooting his shot, trying to approach to get her attention. So there's so many mixed messages that get thrown out there, whether it be social media or just in society at large and also in the workplace too, to where you don't, as a man, you don't almost don't know what you are capable of doing or what's allowed or what's acceptable anymore mm -hmm. because there's so many things being said at the same time. Because even like sitting in like some HR meetings and not because I earned it, you know, they, they, they made the companies like, you know, mm -hmm. everybody had sit in them and it was breaking down certain things that are under the uh, umbrella of sexual harassment some things made a lot of sense because like oh yeah that's very aggressive and some things were like very basic it was like oh you look nice today literally that and it's like you can't compliment anybody and yeah, i understand can't compliment nobody no more yeah and it is a, there's a fine line between giving somebody a compliment and trying to pepe a little pure chick right you know what i'm saying well yeah come on you know <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and it's like for, oh. for, the, for the for the little for the millennials that they grew up watching looney tunes you know, Google Pepe with you. He was a rapist on television. <laughs> he, he, it, was, it was a proof form, form of harassment, harassment back then. Nobody called it harassment anything. Now, in respect, like, damn, he, he was a rapist. He, he, was, he, he was would not take no for an answer. He, he was not. Pepe, Pepe Weinstein. Oh, yeah. You know what right. I mean? I'm like, no, he chased He chased them women. Didn't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. He got aggressive, physically aggressive. He, he, I'm like, that shit would not fly today. At all. And uh, so there's a lot of people out there. I, I think everybody's just gun shy at this point now and just a little bit confused mm -hmm. as, as to how to play it. And I think, yo, a closed mouth don't get fed. Indeed. If you're trying to eat, ma, go ahead and eat. That's what I'm talking about. I like that. I like that definitely, man. I appreciate you being here inside the ring. No doubt. You know, like I mentioned, you know, um, you know, off camera, you know, I am going to, you know, eventually create a documentary around you know the dating scene here in atlanta and you know it's, it's my purpose i want to dispel some of these negative myths about dating and why you know so many people think atlanta isn't a great place to find you know their soulmate and why atlanta you know is terrible for dating particularly when they talk about dating for black women so many black women you know have spoken to me directly talked about how you know they just given up i i've heard several women even a couple friends of mine talk about i'm gonna have to move out of atlanta to find the man for me and i'm just like no my the, the man for you is somewhere here in the city mm -hmm. you know stop using the city as a scapegoat stop using the city as an excuse it's not the city i'm like yeah atlanta is no different from la dc chicago new york miami down wherever every city has issues every city has it's fair share of assholes. Right. But it doesn't mean that the man for you isn't here somewhere. You can't blame the city. Atlanta is unique. It's got its own set of issues. However, there is love to be found here. But I mean, you also got to look at statistics, though. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get mad or deny the statistical facts of, and I don't know what the current total is, but at one point in time, I think when I got here, there was like seven women for every guy. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. you know the, the racer and I did a video, I got a video on my uh, in uh, my channel about um, the infamous Atlanta ratio. Is it true? No, when I, I came to Atlanta in 1997, that was one of the first things one of the old heads at Morehouse told me. He was like, man, you know the ratio of women to men is like 12 to 1. Oh, damn, it went down. That was 97. So I'm, like, you know, I'm, I'm 18 years old, and they're like, man, it's 12 to 1. Somebody else said, man, no, it's, it's 20 to 1. I'm like, basically, everywhere I looked, they were like, you know, the women vastly outnumber men, which I understand, but it goes back to my whole approaching um, women approaching men. If you know you're in a city like Atlanta and there are way more of you than there are black men, mm -hmm. why not step outside the bleachers, stop trying to blend in with the rest and see what the other black men do something different. Yeah. I, out of all, you know, I'm 44. Every woman that I've approached, I can't remember all their names. I don't know all the names of women I've tried to approach, but every woman that's approached me, I remember them. They stand out. He stand out in a positive way, regardless if it went somewhere or not. The fact that a woman approached me, mm -hmm. you know, came and asked me my name, got my number, it will, I'll never forget them. But for whatever reason, some women, they just want to sit in the bleachers with the rest of the women, with the majority of women just wait, you know, to be recruited, which I understand. Yeah, if, if like if there's only six players that could play on a basketball team and, you know, or be on the court at one time and there's 32 of y'all, you better let the coach know you really want to play. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you will be on the sidelines watching the game, wondering why it didn't work for you. And you also have to adjust your rules for the city that you're in. If you know you're in a city where you're outnumbered and the ratios is bad, man, you better throw your jersey on and get out there and be like, yo, coach, throw me the ball. Because there's chicks out here who are playing. Right. And, and you also have to uh, you know, figure out exactly what you want the dynamics of your relationship to be because understanding what it is there are guys who are used to being time shared mm. and 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 there are women who allow it and 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 people are only going to do what you let them do mm -hmm. so you have to get not only get out there and be vocal about what you're interested in who you're interested in and what level of, or type of relationship you're interested in accepting because there's a lot more guys being honest as to what it is. Hey, I'm married. What you trying to do? Right. Or, um, yo, I'm not in a, I'm not in a monogamous relationship. I, I have a, I have a, uh, what do you call it, a roster. Are you willing to be on the roster? Some yeah, people will say yes, some people say no. Some people will settle, some people feel like I'm too good to settle. And if you feel like you're too good to settle, good. Be too good to settle. You got to do what works for you, and, but you have to always make the adjustments to play the game with the rules that are being, in a, you know, the, not play the game, but the rules that are out there. But you have to make the adjustments for what works. When it's snow outside, you don't drive regular. Mm -hmm. You throw a car in a different gear. You drive differently when, it, when it's snow on the ground. If it's raining, you don't drive the same way you drive when the sun is out. So applying that science to relationships, if you know you're playing in an aggressive market, you better play aggressive. Mm -hmm. I feel that. I'm with it. Brother Headcrack, again, thank you so much for joining me. For thank people you. out there who want to follow you, the follow the work you're doing, you know, how can they get in touch with you? You know, social media, website, how can people follow Headcrack? I'm so easy to find. H-E-A-D-K-R-A-C-K, uh, -E whether you're talking about that Twitter, that Instagram, that YouTube, uh, that Facebook, I'm on TikTok now. Uh, I also make music, man. I got a song for all the ladies out there who feel like uh, you're not being heard. There's a record called Mona Lisa Scars, which is a bop. And uh, I even got an Afrobeats version for people who like to dance in front of the mirror as they get ready. So uh, be sure you tap in on all those musical platforms, H-E-A-D-K-R-A-C-K. -E and I'm out here. I'm listening to y'all. And if you send me that link, I'll post it in the description. You know, don't worry, everybody. All this social media will be posted in the description. All you got to do is click on it. And, you know, you can, you can you know, find and follow what he's doing. Brother Headcrack, thank you so much. Thank you. This has been Ringside Corner Confessions. And we are out this thing once again. And I holla. Peace. Peace.